behind me is the world famous fourth bridge or fourth railway bridge as it is indeed a rail track bridge. The construction started in 1878 by a design by a man called Thomas Bouch but Thomas was sacked from his job a year later due to another of his designs, the Tay Bridge near Dundee. It collapsed in a great storm catapulting the train into the icy waters of the Tay and so actually Mr Bouch didn't work from then on. He sadly died a couple of years later but it left the construction of the bridge open and it didn't start again until 1882 with two designers coming in and that was John Fowler and Benjamin Baker. Now they had the work cut out for them as us Scots were terrified to cross anything bigger than a stream or a burn as we would say. So they had to build a bridge that was, well it was strong and it had to look strong. So they opted for this cantilever design. A cantilever design takes the pressure off from the centre and so the construction is from the centre outwards and it makes the process just that little bit quicker. But just like a safety conscious Scotsman wearing a belt and braces with his trousers to make sure they don't fall down, they opted for double cantilevers. So what we have here are three double cantilevers. Uh, they're 110 metres high. The actual bridge itself is two and a half kilometres long, sitting on granite foundations. And uh, when we were younger, we used to think this was the largest roller coaster in the world because we were told that the train went along, up, along, down, along, up, along, down, along, up, along, down, and it was in fact a roller coaster. We were pretty gutted when we went on our first train journey across the bridge. Now, 4,600 men worked on the bridge. They worked in all weathers. You can imagine here in Scotland, we get four seasons in one day, sometimes in one hour. Uh, and it wouldn't be much fun working out there in the centre of the bridge with the 90 mile an hour winds howling around you and the rain lashing off you. There wouldn't be much health and safety either. There was deaths on the bridge during the construction. We know of certainly 73 men that died during the construction. There would have been more, but we know of the names of 73 men uh, that died during the construction of the bridge itself. The bridge opened on the 4th of March 1890 with the Royal Carriage, the Royal Train, taking the Prince of Wales to the centre cantilever uh, and it was a terrible windy day and they wanted to get this over and done with very, very quickly. And so the Prince was given a key that would unlock a box that would release a hammer that would drive home the final rivet. The rivet that bolted it all together. In fact, there was 6.5 million rivets in the process of the bridge uh, construction. And so this final rivet that was hammered in by this hammer that was released by the Prince of Wales was actually gold covered or gold coated. Um, well, the English press had a field day with that and said typical stingy Scots only giving the Prince a a, a gold covered rivet rather than a solid gold rivet. Well, there is a reason for that. The rivets that were going in normally were going in hot. They were going in scolding hot. This rivet was going in cold. It needed a softer metal on the outside of it so it could be driven into the hole. And gold was, of course, the obvious choice. So it was nothing to do with us being stingy. Now, spectators came from all over the world to watch the grand opening of our mighty bridge. One such spectator was Gustave Eiffel, Monsieur Eiffel, who had built his Eiffel Tower just a year before for the Expo in Paris. Well, he had great admiration for the design and the construction of this bridge. Uh, but Benjamin Baker, he didn't pass back any other compliments to, to Eiffel, no. In fact, he said of Eiffel's design that it was ill-proportioned, ugly, and quite frankly, a waste of time a bit harsh but back in Victorian times we built things for purpose not for pleasure and of course the Eiffel Tower built for the Expo in 89 in Paris was only meant to be up one year it's done quite well. In more modern times the bridge is very much a part of popular culture and uh, has featured in films like The 39 Steps uh, by Alfred Hitchcock in 1935 and in more modern times it's featured in Grand Theft Auto, one of the fastest selling video games in the world and also in adverts selling our national soft drink Iron Brew because of course we all know Iron Brew is made from the girders of this bridge. But it has just become a UNESCO site in 2017, it's one of six UNESCO sites in Scotland and 
when it opened, it was the largest steel structure in the world. And we are very proud to be here and have the fourth bridge as part of our town. So the bridge itself um, is 90, when they checked it for the UNESCO listing, it's around 95% original. Um, so it's quite uh, something to say that it's still from 1890, mostly original uh, within its steel and its, uh, its rivets. And um, the thing with the bridge as well, it's still a very active bridge. There's 190 to 200 trains cross the fourth bridge every day. For something that's about to turn 130, uh, it's quite an incredible structure. There is the old adage of it's like painting the fourth bridge, which means that when you start and you get to the end of painting the bridge, you have to start again. It's continuous, it never ends. Now we have a brand new formula of paint used on the bridge, uh, which means that we don't actually have to paint it for another 25 years. Uh, so that old adage, well, that's now in the past. So this is a new formula that allows us to have our bandages, what we call our bandages or scaffolding that was on the bridge continuously as they painted. Um, we no longer have to have that because the formula will last around about 25 years.